This drama, which had an investment of 32 billion Korean won, faced a nationwide boycott in South Korea after airing only two episodes. The entire production team was forced to apologize. The story is set during the Joseon dynasty in Korea. The third generation king, Taejong, is faced with a sudden outbreak of zombies. He leads a team of corpse hunters to Hamju, where they believe the leader of the zombies is located. Upon entering the city, they witness a group of zombies gazing at the sky, seemingly waiting for a signal. Just as Taejong's team is about to attack, the zombies twist their bodies in an eerie and terrifying manner. However, Taejong's team is prepared, and they engage in a fierce battle against the zombies. The group includes demon exorcists from the western regions, skilled swordsmen, and King Taejong himself leading the charge. They fight through the night, their clothes soaked in green blood. At dawn, the people who were hiding saw the zombie corpses on the ground and rushed out to kneel and thank Taejong. However, Taejong suddenly has a vision of his long dead father. <laughs> In the vision, his father held out his bloody right hand and said that it was his brother's blood. Years ago, Taejong had killed his own brother to secure the throne. Ensnared by the hallucination, Taejong strikes down his father, but in reality, he has killed an innocent civilian. As more illusions plague him, Taejong continues to slaughter the surrounding people. This dark incident remains hidden. A decade later, Taejong's third son, Kang Neon, is hunting in the woods. Suddenly, a falcon let out an ear-splitting cry. One of the guards stumbled out of the forest with a bleeding neck. Then another guard came out and stomped on his body. <laughs> the guards rush forward to stop him but are slashed to death by the zombie. Kang Neon, who was stunned, stood still. The maids all rushed forward to stop the zombie. But all of them became dead souls under the zombie's hands. Until the zombie drained the last guard. Kang Young turned around and fled into the distance. Kang Young was about to be killed by the zombie when Taejong came with his man and shot the zombie with an arrow. <laughs> However, the dying zombie manages to scratch Kang Young's hand. Seeing the wound, Taejong realizes that Kang Young's transformation into a zombie is inevitable and contemplates killing him. Meanwhile, Taejong's eldest son, Yang Neong, is flirting with a woman. Although they haven't had a chance to engage in a deep conversation, the chief magistrate of Hanseon finds Yang Neong and informs him about the appearance of zombies near MT Borum. He instructs Yang Neong to lead troops quickly to Yeju to suppress the budding zombie outbreak. At that moment, a commotion erupts near the city gates. Yang Neong hastily leads his men to investigate the situation. There, he sees sedan bearers complaining about the increasing weight of the sedan, making it nearly impossible for them to lift. Observing this, Yang Neong approaches and inquires about the situation. He learns that the bearers have come from MT Borum. Curious, Yang Neong considers pulling back the curtain of the sedan to see who is inside. However, a servant on the side vehemently opposes this idea. At this point, the servant stopped him saying that the young lady and the young lady inside had just given birth and that it was not the right time to meet the saint. One of Yang Neong's guards reminds him that the father of the person in the sedan is aligned with the same faction as Yang Neong. It wouldn't be wise to offend them, considering the advice. Yang Neong decides to let the sedan pass without further inspection. The bearers quickly lifted the sedan chair and prepared to move on. Just as the sedan is about to enter the city, Yang Neong notices fresh blood oozing from underneath. He sensed something was wrong and immediately made the sedan chair stop, feeling the blood on the ground and smelling the stench of a rotting corpse. Ignoring the sedan bearer's protests, Yang Neon orders his guard to prepare to open the sedan door. However, at this moment, the left royal guard commander, who is beside Kang Neon, rushes over and informs Yang Neon of Taejong's order to behead Kang Neon. When Yang Neon heard the news, he didn't care about anything else but ordered to stop the palanquin from entering the city and hurriedly followed the left guard back to the palace. Unbeknownst to Yang Neong, as he departs, the occupant of the sedan begins to undergo a mutation. The sedan bearers have already sent someone to contact influential figures in the city to pave the way for their entry. Meanwhile, Taejong prepares to eliminate Kang Neong to prevent the possibility of him turning into a zombie. However, Queen Wan Neong stands steadfastly before Kang Neong, blocking Taejong's path. Taejong looked at Queen Wan Yeong. He could only temporarily spare Kang Yeong's life. 
He orders his attendants to take Kang Young to an ice chamber to slow the spread of the zombifying infection. Taejong plans to wait until his second son, Chung Neung, returns from the western regions with an exorcist to have a chance at saving Kang Young. After Taizong settled Kunning, he reprimanded Yang Ning, who had arrived in a hurry. Taejong reprimands Yang Yun for not watching over Yamashiro properly, which led to Kang Yun being bitten by a zombie. Taejong's accusation makes Yang Yun feel aggrieved that he didn't know about the zombie and now he has to take the blame for the accident. Yang Yun is so upset that he asks his men to find out who went in and out of the palace last night and behead all the offenders. On the other hand, Chung Yun has already met the exorcist in the western region and told him and his interpreter Marco about the zombie in Doctor's Ridge. Instead of rushing to solve the zombie crisis, they went to a restaurant to have a feast. After they have devoured the food, they still have no intention to go to the palace, but continue to urge them to serve another round of food. Chung Yun has no choice but to urge his men to serve the food. After waiting for a while, Marco saw that his men had not returned yet, so he wanted to go there himself. But just as he opened the door, The mutated boss's wife jumped at him. Chung Nian acts swiftly, restraining the zombie innkeeper with his followers. The exorcist rushes forward to perform his ritual, but it proves ineffective. The zombie pushes the exorcist aside and lunges towards Chung Nian. Chung Nian was about to die, when suddenly the zombie's body and head were separated. Before Chung Nian could react, a group of Goryeo swordsmen appeared in front of him. Simultaneously, Taejong seeks the help of a Korean shaman to rid Kang Nian of the zombie poison. However, the shaman reveals that the affliction is not zombie poison but a malevolent spirit from the western regions. She admits her inability to expel such spirits. Upon hearing this, Taejong orders the palace gates to be sealed until Chung Nian returns with the exorcist. That night Yang Nian came to the ice room to see Kang Nian, who was freezing and shivering, and his heart was full of helplessness. At that moment, the guards came to tell Yang Nian that something unusual had happened outside the city gates. On the other side, Chung Nian they locate a zombie to allow the exorcist to study it closely. This time, the exorcist finally manages to extract some useful information. The revelation leaves the exorcist profoundly shocked because Azazel is a demon of the western regions, also known as the leader of evil spirits. Meanwhile, Yang Nian arrives at the city gates, only to be met with a gruesome scene. Bodies scattered everywhere, all drained of their blood. In the distance, the chilling sound of chewing echoes, approaching closer, Yang Yun encounters a hunchbacked zombie feasting on a victim. Swiftly, Yang Yun dispatches the zombie with his sword. However, the woman who was supposed to be in the sedan is nowhere to be found. Simultaneously, within a mansion in the city, a pale-faced woman stands amidst a room filled with corpses. Have you ever seen a zombie possessed by a demon? In the Joseon dynasty, King Taejong engaged in some form of pact with a demon. However, Taejong later turned against the demon and trapped Azazel, the demon's leader. Taejong faced Azazel with determination. Despite his inner fear, Taejong ordered his men to wear earplugs for Azazel's magical voice. Using a bronze shield formation, he restrained Azazel's movements. Then, using arrowheads inscribed with runes, he pierced Azazel's head. With a bronze mirror reflecting Azazel's true form, Taejong, wielding a radiant sword, beheaded the demon. A swarm of black insects emerged from the remains, luckily causing no harm. Taejong ordered Azazel's corpse to be placed in a bronze coffin adorned with a cross and covered with stones. Finally, he had a priest from the West seal it in the name of Jesus. Ten years later, zombies reappear. Taejong's youngest son, Kang Neong, is bitten by a zombie. Taejong visits the sealed burial site and notices signs of disturbance. Could Azazel have truly returned? One of Taejong's ministers tries to reassure him stating that some stones have been moved but it may not indicate Azazel's resurrection. If Azazel really came back to life, he would have taken revenge on Taejong first, not Kang Neon. Even though he said that, Taejong asked the minister to send more people to watch over the place. On the other hand, Yang Neon was attacked by a group of zombies with swords outside the city gate. They attacked fiercely like they are undead. Yang Neon's sword cuts off half of the zombie's head, but it's just like scratching an itch to the zombie. As the situation grew grim, luckily Yang Neon's teacher arrived with reinforcements to join the battle. He knew where the zombies were vulnerable and ordered the crowd to cut their necks. Swiftly, they eliminate the zombie threat. Yang Neon is not relieved. He suspects that a zombie has infiltrated the city. The same woman who entered the city in a sedan chair during the day. They arrive at the woman's house, discovering a scene of desiccated corpses throughout. Strangely, the woman is nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, 
Azazel intensely observes Taejong's every move through the seal. Guards bring a nearby woodcutter who reveals a chilling account. A man named Chang Dae was chopping wood in the neighborhood when he fell from a height and hit the back of his head. He bled all over the ground and died on the spot. However, the next moment, Chang Dae miraculously stood up and moved toward the seal, attempting to remove the sealing stones. Although unsuccessful, a small snake emerged from the seal, biting Chang Dae's neck. Chang Dae then bled to death. Soon after, Zhang Dae inexplicably came back to life again, this time draining the blood of his wife and daughter. Evidently, Azazel seeks to harness Chang Dae's revival ability to break Taejong's seal. Meanwhile, Chang Yang seeks the exorcist's help to rid his guards of evil spirits. The exorcist explains that if the wounds are not too deep, exorcism might work. If the wound is too deep, the evil spirit will completely dominate the person's body. The guards could only be beheaded. But Chang Yang couldn't bear to see his guards die and begged the exorcist to save him. While they were arguing, the guards on the ground mutated and attacked them. They were almost killed by a zombie. Luckily, Goryeo swordsman outlining and Haiyu arrive in time to save Chang Yang. Chang Yang was puzzled why these zombies only attacked the priest. Marco informs him that Azazel has commanded them to eliminate the priest. As part of his path to resurrection, Azazel possesses formidable power, controlling both the living and the dead. Simultaneously, Within the palace, Kang Yang mutters to himself. In the distance, a woman in white seems to be under Kang Yang's control, and she walks to the door of the ice room where Kang Yang is being held in a strange and stiff manner. Luckily, Taejong found her in time. Apparently, this is the work of the evil spirit possessing Kang Yang. Taejong drew his sword and threatened Kang Yang to tell him if he was possessed by Azazel, but Kang Yang begged Taejong to kill him. It's the only way not to bring suffering to Taejong and the other brothers and even the Joseon dynasty, just as Taizong was about to do it. The evil spirit appeared and said, if you kill this body now, it will go to the next one, and guess who it will be. In order to prevent harm to others, Taejong is left with no choice but to issue a threat to the evil spirit. He warns that if the spirit harms his son's life, he will ensure that the evil spirit can never resurrect again. Taejong then turned around and left. On the other side, Chang Yang seeks out the Goryeo swordsmen, hoping they can escort their group back to the royal city, with his own guards decimated. Chang Yang urgently requires a contingent of guards to ensure his and the exorcist's safety. The Goryeo swordsmen readily agree, as they also need Chang Yang's status to gain entry into the inner parts of the royal city to locate the Goryeo orphan. Meanwhile, Taejong has learned that zombies have infiltrated the city. He summons Yang Yang and berates him, accusing him of indulging in debauchery and achieving nothing. However, after tirelessly searching all night and facing such criticism, Yang Yang's pent-up frustration reaches its breaking point. At this moment, Taejong receives a carrier pigeon message from Chang Yang. The letter confirms that the exorcist can indeed cure those possessed by evil spirits, rekindling hope for the Joseon dynasty. Taejong then writes about Kang Yang's possession in the letter and urges Chang Yang to hasten the exorcist's return to the palace, but this reply letter is discovered by Yang Yang who seeks out Queen Wang Yang to inquire why his father is seeking the exorcist's help. There are rumors in the palace that the zombies were recruited by father and King Tai Shang. Are these rumors true? However, Queen Wang Yang merely brushes off his questions, stating that he will find the answers once he ascends the throne. But recent baseless accusations from Tai Zhang have pushed Yang Yang's inner frustration to its limits. Determined to uncover the truth, Yang Yang resolves to find out who brought the zombies into Joseon, whoever it is. He's going to bring him to justice for harming the country. Not long after, Yang Yang tracks down the person who opened the city gates and allowed the zombies to enter. It turns out to be a subordinate of Han Xiong Prefect. Yang Ning then questioned Prefect as to why he allowed his men to open the gate despite the injunction. The Prefect says it's all for his highness. He orchestrated this crisis to give Yang Yang an opportunity to shine, thus regaining the king's favor and securing the throne. Hearing this, Yang Yang's thoughts take a different turn. Meanwhile, Taejong enters a hidden chamber. There were many ancient bronze mirrors hanging on the wall. In front of Taejong hangs the mirror that bears the imprint of Azazel's true form. Taejong then brought the mirror to Kang Yang and revealed the evil spirit that possessed him. In the distance, a group of zombies gathers strength, ready to launch their attack. 